Hi, and welcome to Photoshop Live Stream TV. I'm your host, Marek Mulajic. Welcome to this nature episode of Photoshop Live Stream TV. Uh, we got a long weekend here in the UK, that's why I'm recording on Monday, and when you watch the show, it's Tuesday. A couple of news. If you watch the, my blog, Photoshop Live Stream TV, you can read about the new phones in Photoshop. You'll also find out uh, I've got some really exciting tips and tricks for you and tutorials. But this week we got one more part of our Photoshop and Lightroom taster from our recent event here in London. So this is for you, okay? And then we'll be back to studio. So I'm in develop module. Oh, I'm back to Lightroom and I'll use this folder here. I won't go through all the settings because the settings are the same as in Camera Raw in Photoshop and I'm sure you know that. Lightroom and Photoshop and Bridge use the same Camera Raw engine. In Lightroom 3, Photoshop CS5, it's Raw 6. In CS Photoshop CS4 and Lightroom 2, it's Camera Raw 5. The latest one is 5.7, I think. One of the things you're probably aware of is when the new version of Photoshop or Lightroom comes out, Adobe stops supporting Camera Raw. So I'm in here. Well, the image looks slightly different on my laptop, but that's fine. I want to make some adjustments here. You know all the adjustments. What I want to show you is the graduated filter. This was an amazing feature when it came out with Lightroom 2. And up to recently, it wasn't a part of Photoshop. There are many things in Photoshop that come from Lightroom. Yeah? Like, you know, like the adjustments panel that just came out with Photoshop CS4. The graduated filter. It's now in Photoshop CS5 as well, in Camera Raw. Okay, so I'll use the graduated filter. I mostly use this on landscapes or any images that have a strong contrast between foreground and background. You probably know what graduated filter is. We used to use them a long time ago on film cameras, right? Okay, this is really easy. I'll just click and drag on, I'm just going to collapse that. I'll just click and drag on the image. Or maybe not. Yeah. Okay. I can move that. Okay. Looks good. And now, what I want to apply here, I want to incre decrease exposure. Mm, isn't it nice? Okay. It looks pixelated because this is a low res uh, JPEG image. No graduated filters. Yeah. A good graduated filter for your lens. Cost like what, 100 pounds, 200 pounds? Really good graduated filter. And you can use any feature here. I could use saturation at the same time. Yeah, looks good. Okay, I'll just close that. What if I want to play with the foreground? I can use the adjustment brush. These are not new features in Lightroom 3. You can find them in Lightroom 2 as well. Okay, very similar, but this time you paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease exposure again, I'll increase this, oh, I'll decrease the saturation. Okay, and I'm going to paint on here to make the foreground black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, N all non-destructive. Okay, what else can we do? I'll just close, uh, okay. Let's see, looks good. Uh, crop tool with the crop overlay, right? When you crop the images in Lightroom, you can see the crop overlay. This is also now in Photoshop CS5. And I can move the image. It gets used to the crop in Lightroom because you're actually moving the image, not the crop overlay, all right? Okay, I'm just going to reset that. You can also straighten the images. Right, so, okay, what else we got here? Just going to go down, just close that. I'm happy with the colors in the image. I'm not, I'm not going to go into this here. One feature I want to show you here is the clarity and vibrance. Don't use the contrast, use clarity, because it's more subtle. It gives you better results. Okay. So if you want to sharpen your images, you use the clarity slider instead. I may need to zoom in here as well. Hello. 
so it, yeah, it is one to one. It is a hundred percent view image. Okay, the same with vibrance and saturation. Don't use saturation, use vibrance, because vibrance is more subtle. Vibrance only saturates the image that are low, low, why, why do you say that? They are washed out. It doesn't saturate everything. Saturation slider saturates everything in the image, every color. Okay, the vibrance looks into the image, it estimates which colors should be more saturated, and it takes care of these colors only. I'll show you. That's the saturation, everything, and that's the vibrance. Not that much change in the foreground. Okay. Okay, if you want the black and white images, just black and white. By the way, I'm just going to show you something. If you right click anywhere in the panel, I'm using what's called solo mode. Solo mode opens just one part at the same time, so you don't have clutter in your panel. If you open one panel, let's say I'm going to open tone curve, the HSL will collapse. Okay? It's closed. Solo mode just opens one panel at a time. Okay, uh, lens correction, this is new in, C in Lightroom 3. Sometimes it doesn't detect it. It doesn't detect all the Adobe did with Photoshop CS5 and Lightroom 3. They started creating profiles for camera and lens combination. And they fix the lens distortions automatically. So this image selected. Uh, I'm just going to press Control E or Command E on the Mac to edit the photo in Photoshop. Because it's JPEG, I get this uh, dialog box here. How do I want to copy the image? Do I want to co use the, a copy or the original or the copy with the adjustment? Okay. So let's say I want to edit a copy. I don't want to play with the original or with the adjustments maybe. Okay. And I'll just click on edit. Now it opens in Photoshop because Lightroom uses Profoto RGB color space as the default. It asks me what I want to do because my Photoshop is set up to Adobe RGB. I'm going to leave it as Profoto RGB. I'll just press OK. This is my image in Photoshop. Okay. Oh, you don't see that anymore. Okay. And I'm going to make some changes here. So I'll go to Adjustments panel and I'll do black and white so we can see the difference. Okay. Like that. I'm going to close that. Save it. Yes. And I'll go back to Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, I have two images. It says two in here. If I click on it, it shows me both images. So it keeps the copy from Photoshop in Lightroom. Lightroom can read PSD files because I'm probably out of time. Hi, it's me again, Marek Mulacek. I'm talking to you. This was the last part of our Photoshop Lightroom Taster event here in London. Now I've got so many really, really interesting tips and tricks for you and tutorials that I'm going to share with you from the next week on. We'll get more creative. I'm going to show you more things you can actually create with Photoshop. We'll have a look on 3D in Photoshop as well. And of course Lightroom. We'll be focusing on Lightroom 3, but many things will apply to Lightroom 2 as well. If you've been following my blog, Photoshop Lightroom Bridge, let's go to K, you probably have heard about the Facebook plugin for Lightroom. If you haven't seen it, go back to Photoshop Lightroom Bridge, let's go to K, and read about this really interesting plugin that ships with Lightroom. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'm Marek Mulacic, I'm glad to see you here, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV next Monday. This will be the first September episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. Have a great weekend, week, weekend, and I'll see you. Next